Mark Smelly Bell here, and I'm going to explain some stuff that I did when I was at Westside Barbell. You guys might find this really useful and helpful. Today, we're going to be talking about the dynamic effort method. But before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the max effort method and the repetition effort method. Max effort method, self-explanatory, going super heavy on a variety of benches, squats, and deadlifts, not the exact exercises themselves normally, uh, normally some variation of a bench squat or deadlift. Repetition effort method refers to hypertrophy training, bodybuilding training, because oftentimes a larger muscle can be a stronger muscle and it can help you with like leverage and things of, uh, of that nature. The dynamic effort method, here's where this comes in. You can only max out so often, you can only max out for so long, and you'll get really strong, but sometimes you might start to slow down quite a bit. So Louis Simmons introduced this method, the dynamic effort method, so that his athletes were practicing how to be explosive, how to be quick. And this came from a long line of literature from the Russians, uh, also from something called compensatory acceleration, which was founded by Dr. Squat, who was one of the first people to squat over a thousand pounds. And I think he only weighed like 260 pounds. So he was a savage even back in the day. Compensatory acceleration refers to you're trying to put as much force into the bar as possible, regardless of the weight and regardless of how fast it's actually moving. What Louis Simmons did is he decided to kick it up a notch by adding bands and chains to the bar. Louis was smart enough to recognize that if we have a 45 pound bar and we try to move it super fast, our body is so smart that it's gonna slow down. We're gonna have a lot of deceleration going on. When you have bands or chains on the bar, the deceleration is not completely gone, but almost. And then we end up with something new and something different, which is called an accelerated eccentric. Concentric is upward, eccentric is lowering, so now we end up with the eccentric phase that goes whoosh. You'll see as these weights come down, they're gonna come down really rapidly and really fast. Normally, we would do uh, 10 sets of three, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna take you guys through a few sets. And we ain't got all that time, but normally, you're also moving at a pretty fast pace. Lifting with maybe three other individuals, you're changing weights out fast, like a car at a pit stop and you're trying to move quick and you're trying to rotate in and out as fast as you can. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like in real time for as many sets as I can until the video is over with. I would also say, guys, I wouldn't even really mess with this method until you bench press around 225 pounds. Uh, for, you know, in the, in the meantime, uh, just keep, I encourage you to just keep training and, and get yourself a little stronger. Here we go. You want to be fast. The rest time back in the day, all I would do is I would go here. We would set it up so that it was easy to get the other guy to lift. We'd pull off a 25 or a 10. I'd come back here. I would support the guy that's lifting. I would give him a lift off. I'd pop over here. I'd spot the next guy that was going. On his set, I would be encouraging him. You should be encouraging one another. And if you're not training with training partners, I understand why, because it can sometimes be difficult, but I strongly recommend you get around other people and try to get around people that are better than you. It's time for another set already. So I gotta shut up. We'd also use a variety of grips. So first grip, I went right here, pinky on there. This grip, I'm gonna go with a close grip. There you go. Just do a little walk around, just because that's what I'm used to. I always like to roll the bar to the front, so that way when I do my bench pressing, I'm just lined up on there properly, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit the rack with the bar. But getting around like-minded people is going to be one of the single greatest things that you can ever do in your life. Me formulating Super Training Gym changed my life forever, even though the gym is free. Time for another set. So now we're gonna go with another grip. I'm gonna go with the ring finger on the smooth. I'm taking another lap. Keep moving. The reason why 
it was so important for me to start Super Training Gym was to get around like-minded people. I knew that if I wanted to squat 1,000 pounds, if I wanted to bench 800 pounds, if I wanted to deadlift 800 pounds, if I wanted to be like my heroes, if I wanted to be like Chuck Vogapool or like Louis Simmons or like Ed Cohn, these people that I looked up to for so many years, I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself. I would have to get around some like-minded savages, some people that really wanted to do anything and everything they could to get stronger. Normal rest periods for this, and we're changing another grip, would be about 45 seconds or so, or even a minute would be fine. You can do these in a variety of ways. You can do what Louis used to talk about. He would call ballistic benching, which I'll show you on this next set, which is actually it turned into something called a Spoto press, which Eric Spoto made famous because Eric Spoto broke the all-time bench record that was previously held by Scott Mendelson. But a lot of these guys broke these records by utilizing these techniques. Powerlifting was pretty stagnant for many years. Lifts weren't really moving much of anywhere until Westside Barbell came along. And then Westside Barbell started having competition and that's when records really started to fall. They really started going crazy. Here's what a ballistic bench press looks like. So we still wanna have, you still wanna move fast, but we're gonna stop close to the chest and reverse on our own without the weight ever hitting our chest. takes a tremendous amount of control and also you could argue like a little bit of a talent level to that like I've been bench pressing for uh, 30 something years so 31 years so it might not be something uh, some of you newer guys need to mess with or try but even just the act of stopping the bar and reversing it wherever you can works great on all three lifts bench squat and deadlift I see a lot of people They'll still do, they'll do a pause squat and they pause down here and they, and they come back up with 405. And I'm thinking, no, dude, like if you pause right here with 405, it's actually the harder because you're not resting on yourself. For some people, it's not true of everybody, but anyway. Last set here. Trying to move as explosively and as fast as you possibly can. When you're lifting these weights, you want to pretend that you're breaking shit. Like you want to get yourself mad. Think about that teacher that you're pissed off at, your parents that you're pissed off at, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. We can work on, we can work on some anger management some other time. But here's a time to work through it. And here's a time to lift through it. You take those frustrations that you have in your life, you think about all those people that counted you out over the years, and you fucking stick it to them right here and show people that you're gonna become somebody because you're not gonna ever stop working. And when the opportunity comes, you're gonna lift and you're gonna do stuff with every single thing that you have, every fiber of your being, everything from anything that's inside your brain all the way down into your toenails. Here we go, as fast as you can. Make it so fast that it hurts. <laughs> Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.